you know, everyone's sitting on their bedroom right now, holding a mic in their hand and singing for social media. Like, is that what you're going to do on stage? Like 99% of the artists are not going to ever be singing like that live to people. However, mm -hmm. right now, most people are singing that way the majority of the year because they're not performing live. They're right. performing for a camera. You, ha you need to work out your voice and your body in a way, and you have to learn this as you go and work with coaches, that supports the kind of show you're having. So Wendy, as somebody who's helped artists develop, successful artists, well-to-do artists, particularly in the singing space, right? Like people who can sing, how do you help somebody who can sing, sing better, right? Like why do, why, why do they even come to you in the first place? So Michael Jordan, Iverson, Pippen, these are incredibly talented athletes. They had five huh. coaches, all the time for their entire career and entire back rooms of people like figuring mm -hmm. out how to optimize and protect them. Right. So as a singer, like my job as a coach to a singer is to help somebody just be able to do what they want to do more freely, more fun, better, elevate stronger. Um, so helping somebody be really strong and healthy on tour, be able to have the dynamics and the choices they want to execute their song, to express how they want to express as opposed to being limited. You know, again, imagine I'm a, you know, car mechanic and I'm just going to like boost that engine and like all of a sudden you're like, holy cow, I didn't know my car could do this. Mm. That's what we want for the voice. And when you do that, the singer can execute under all circumstances. This is a nervous system. So you can hear me, I've got allergies right now. So you've got allergies, you went from humid to dry, out airport, hotel, tired, hungover, got your period, broke up with your boyfriend, your emotions, you're walking onto the Grammy stage for the first time. Like, especially when you're elevating as an artist, well, you are literally going to be under new levels of anxiety over and over because you're constantly in a new space, right? Like, oh my God, I'm playing for 5,000 people now. Oh my gosh, I'm opening for this person on this arena now. Like, hopefully you are constantly out of your comfort zone. So yeah. the other aspect to that is one, giving you a set of tools so that you can literally physically deliver through singing, through performance, and two, working on your emotional and mental game so that you have the ability to ride the wave of the ups and downs, to being off tour, to the struggles, to the what feel like the worst day of your life. Oh, but I can execute my job still. I'm not going to lose the game because I'm stressed or I've you know, got bad news. I'm going to use my emotional life to be present with people, to be vulnerable, to move my audience. And so we're, we're able to like really work on the whole person. Um, I, I'm not like a huge sports person. Like I don't turn the game all the time. I love basketball. I love athletics. I love the discipline. Um, Phil Jackson's book, Sacred Hoops, absolutely gorgeous. And he talks about how he had rehearsals, I say rehearsals, he had rehearsals practices with the Lakers uh, where they never touched a basketball. You don't huh. need to teach Kobe how to dribble, right? You needed, he needed to work on their mental game and their teamwork and their meditations and um, get them to play the game better and work together better. So that's another aspect and layer that I address. Mm. It's funny when you spoke, I just instantly got this image that we got going viral on our page right now of Pink laying down with somebody <laughs> like standing on her right yeah. and singing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all circumstances literally <laughs> well and she's literally being an acrobat while she sings right she's flying through space she's doing Cirque du Soleil um and her her athleticism like she needs to train in a way that allows her to perform the way she performs and that's mm -hmm. the case for every artist you know there's this I don't know there's I'm gonna say it's I don't even think it's cool but you know, everyone's sitting on their bedroom right now, holding a mic in their hand and singing for social media. Is that your stage? Like, is that what you're going to do on stage? Like 99% of the artists are not going to ever be singing like that live to people. However, mm -hmm. right now, most people are singing that way the majority of the year because they're not performing live. They're right. performing for a camera, right? But you, you need to work out your voice and your body in a way, and you have to learn this as you go and work with coaches, that supports the kind of show you're having. You know, and so I got people doing cardio and I've got, I've got five and 10 pound weights right at my feet here that I'll get artists using while we're singing to not only engage muscles that need to be engaged, but also like just literally let's elevate the level of energy you have. Because if we're zooming or you're in my space, you're in a room, 
And you're like, oh, I'm comfortable singing right now. Your adrenaline isn't, isn't up like this. And so we need to get that closer to what a show would be like and, and do more and more of that, you know, get someone on my bike or get them on the treadmill working out and singing. You have to prepare for your show. Yeah, that's interesting. Like the concept of training for the type of show you want. I don't know like how true this is, but I remember there being one Beyonce album where a rumor came out that like she squats and heels and she does like a lot of training and heels and things because she I wears so. them on stage, right? Like she's dancing and do a full chore choreography on it. And I remember the comments of, of different types of artists just being like, man, I couldn't even imagine a world where like, you know, like I, I squatted 180 pounds with, with heels on it or something like that, you know what I'm saying? But then you, to your point, right, it's like, well, but that's the type of show Beyonce has. So Beyonce has to be kind of, if that is true, it makes sense. She has to be training like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I don't know if she did the squats in them, but for sure she better be training in them because there's no way you're <laughs> running around for an hour and a half in heels and up and down stairs and, and not prepared for that. You have to be prepared for that. Yeah. yeah what, what, I, what I think is interesting too, right? Because, you know, and for the audience, right, when we talk about a lot of the artists coming to you, right? These are artists that are already talented in a sense, right? Like the average person may look at them and think that they're perfect. They're already amazing, but the higher ups kind of see that next level they can go to. And, you know, even in this, con I think even in the last conversation, a lot of your training seems to revolve around more like mental kind of reconstructing. I know you said there are physical moments in it, but it's like, it seems like 80, 90% kind of like mental reconstructing around um, what you do. So in your words, like how much of a good performer do you think comes from having the technical side of it down? And then how much of it do you think comes from just like, the mental side of maybe like certain blocks or things that artists are, are, are subjecting themselves to? That's a great question. So it, it is a combination of both. Like this is the voice draw. With these allergies, like I just do this all day. It's going to help my voice not fall apart. Um, we do both physical and emotional mental work um, because like I said, this instrument is not a piano. Although all your wood instruments, your string instruments, they are affected by humidity. They're affected by the atmosphere, right? Our, mm. our body even more so more like mm. literally. So the way I teach technique, um, the four things basically that you can, you have an effect on to balance your instrument is your vowel, your effort, your airflow, emotion, that fourth one emotion. I, I, that is one of my technical tools because without it, first of all, your voice would not come to life, right? Like I'll be singing technically well, but where's the passion, the soul, Where's the life force, right? So we have to have that. And then secondly is if you just had something happen, let's say before you go on stage and you're trying to suppress that, like, okay, I just got to put that aside and go, you know, pump up my crowd and my audience and make them feel good. So if you're trying to do that, your voice will go, oh, you don't want me to express that? <clears throat> okay. Now nothing gets to come out. Mm -hmm. Like the good time is not going to get to come out because you're trying to hold the sadness or anger back. You actually have to release your emotion and I don't mean go to your audience and say, I'm feeling sad. You sing it through that first song. You let whatever's going on for you come out. You're nervous, emotionally let it out. And what happens? It passes. It passes like that. 90 seconds for emotions to go through our body. Watch a little kid, like just go, oh, what's that? Like, like that, they <laughs> let go, they let go, they let go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I tell that to my son right now though, because he's having long-term tantrums. <laughs> um, but really do they, they they let go and move on to the next thing so when you release emotionally then everything can work right and the first session I have with artists is about the mental game you know the first question I ask artists in this conversation is what do you love about music why do you do it 90% of them tell me no one's ever asked me that mm. this is your life and career no one's ever asked you and some of them are like I really never thought about it on the one hand, you kind of don't need to, like it's driving you, right? Like it's, it's the fire in your belly that is motivating your career. But when we also look at it and get clear about, this is why I do this. And this is what I love about it. And this, is, this is the meaning behind it. And then we look at, okay, now let's look at where your head is and how it's not matching this all the time. <laughs> like there's stuff going on that's worrying you, stressing you. And so we need to address that because the training of like, let's get in shape, let's get the vocals in shape before we even look at artist identity stuff, um, it's so much faster, better, more fun when we let go of the BS in our head 
and we get back to our own personal why, right? Because it's easy to get off track. Artists are their own businessman, your own entrepreneur. You're like, it's so easy to lose sight of why you love music when you're trying to hustle all the other aspects. Have you seen that emotion piece negatively affect someone's ability to like create in general as an artist? 100%. I actually have an artist in my Compass program right now and I've been watching them resist doing the work and I just keep reaching out like, hey, like meet with me this week. What's going on? I'm watching them resist doing the work. And then they had a session where they said to me, okay, I've realized that I just am in this pattern of resistance. So I'm like, I see it too, right? And they recognize, <laughs> <laughs> they recognize that they're resisting. And then we had a conversation around that. And then I led them through some work, some experiential work. And then they're blowing up, texting me saying, oh my gosh, I realize I haven't been able to write a song based on the present. I'm only able to write about the past or the future right now because there's stuff that's been blocking me in the present from like, like actually saying what's going on, what's not working for me. Mm. And so they're like, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. And now they're in the studio, they're writing. We've started looking at their artist identity and like putting things together, seeing why like they were leaning into one thing that isn't really them and shying away from something else. Like we're now seeing where their habits are because of this breakthrough that they had. So yeah, when you are like resisting emotions, resisting, um, when you're resisting looking at something like one part of your life, it, it shuts it like a secret poisons everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we got to examine it. Even if we can just go, I acknowledge you, I feel you. And now I'm going to go back to work, you know, but we have to acknowledge and express it, see it as opposed to like hide it, sweep it, you know. Choke That's it. so interesting because I've heard artists talk about straight up writer's block before, right? You hear that all the time, but you never hear anybody talk about specifically being blocked out of one aspect of their point of view that they aren't able to live it deliver on, right? Like I can't, I can talk about the past, but I can't talk about the present, or I maybe you know, can't do a certain type of song or whatever. That, now that makes me think there could be a lot of different blocks, no different than all the other reasons you go to therapy, right? Right, that's right. <laughs> it, it, that's makes, right. it makes sense. Well, I mean, it's cool that you're able to walk somebody through that breakthrough um, and and help. And like your Compass program is, is one of the more unique programs out there in general in terms of like the type of things you cover and the mentality side that I think a lot of artists um don't get from other people <laughs> in terms of offerings yeah. you know um so i love that you have that and of course you know i got to mention this free scholarship that you've made available for artists and we're going to have a link in the bio because i mean come on free you can't beat that now it's not a guaranteed free college uh, scholarship but you just sign up all right uh, we'll have the link in the bio and, you know, I, I think y'all have an interview process or, or some type of selection process, or is it just random yeah. off of application? It, no, there's an application and we review every application and then we're going to find the top 10 in this contest. And then y'all are going to help us pick the actual top winners. Um, I'm excited because the program is remarkable. It, it really is. I mean, I love what I'm already seeing happening. You know, this Mark Basie's record straight out of compass work. Queen Herbie's latest album, The Alchemist, straight out of compass work. Um, I love the breakthroughs. I'm I'm really helping artists build worlds. Like mm. this is my world that I'm inviting my audience into. This is the world I'm creating, which then goes to merch and content and video and everything. Yeah. Um, and I want this to be available. So we're running the contest for the scholarship and offering the scholarship with you as our partners because I want someone who has the talent and this would really be the right thing for them to help them level up. And maybe this, they don't have the funds for it. That, that just shouldn't, I just hate our world that like, you know, m the more money you have, like just the baseline get, just keeps getting higher. Like no one should be, how do I say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you shouldn't just be able to have like a normal life or a decent life and only because you have a lot of money. Like that's just not right. You know, yeah. just like, just like, you know, we look at, social media and things like the person who's the best at marketing shouldn't be the number one artist. Like artists yeah. should be 
artists. <laughs> and mm. of course, let marketing is a part of it, but and I don't think that's new. Like I, I mean, historically we could look at there's always people that are like super talented artists who make it through. And then there's people who are just really good at marketing who make it through in, in any uh cat any any industry industry. Um but yeah, that's why I'm super excited that like the scholarship opportunity is available because we're making it available so that you know talent can can be supported. Well, um, as you mentioned, this is like a time limited thing because you guys do it in like real cohorts. This isn't just like some buy whenever you see this video. So Correct. you're watching this video probably like five months after it released. This is no go. However, <laughs> if you're watching it and it's been released relatively soon, go check that uh, that link below and yeah, make sure y'all do that ASAP. And if Thank not, you. apply because you'll be on a waiting list and there'll be another scholarship or another opportunity and like and apply because we do we run the program three, four times a year. So oh, you there you go. Be, you could be chosen for another cycle um, and you'll find sure. out about scholarships. Dope. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure for us to be able to offer like cool things like this to the community. So I appreciate you offering it. Thanks, Wendy. Definitely.